This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, and there's a few things that makes this thing an upgrade from the original Osmo 2 and the OG Osmo Pocket for sure. And this could definitely be a great tool for a lot of content creators out there. So some of the things that make this thing really special is that it has a 20 millimeter lens with a one inch sensor. And for me, this was the most exciting thing. It will do 10 bit and 4K up to 60p. So what this is, is a pocket camera on a gimbal. So let's talk about one of the highlight features I think of this camera is its one inch sensor. Now what that's going to do for you over any smaller sensor is that it's gonna do better in low light and also the F2.0 lens, you're gonna get more of that shallow depth of field, which is kind of crazy for a camera this size because most likely your phone does not have a one inch sensor. And I can talk about why a gimbal is going to be better than a digital stabilization software in your phone. So one of the reasons you would want an actual gimbal instead of stabilization in a camera like a GoPro or even your phone is that how that actually works, digital, st digital stabilization actually reframes every frame. So every time the camera shakes or there's a jitter, it's trying to reframe and recenter everything in that frame. Well, if you have your shutter set to a natural motion blur, you're gonna get a weird blur effect a lot of the times when it's reframing. So usually you have to crank your shutter and then you get this unnatural motion in your footage. So what a gimbal is gonna do is stabilize the, the so what the gimbal is actually gonna do is stabilize the footage before it's actually recorded. So you, you can keep your shutter at a natural motion blur, which is typically double your frame rate. So 24p, 48 or one over 50 is close enough. So you can keep the natural blur and just a gimbal is always gonna be more superior than digital, stabiliz digital stabilization in most cases. Another cool feature about the Osmo Pocket 3 over the other Osmo Pockets is it's two inch OLED display and it is a really nice screen. And how it works is actually the on and off switch on this camera as well too. So you actually just flip it off to the side and then it kicks it on. And then you also have features such as vertical mode where you flip it back and it'll ask you to continue, you push continue, and then it actually puts it into a 3K resolution mode and then you can shoot vertically. And I kind of wish this just kind of flipped the gimbal so you can keep the full 4K resolution there, but it's still good. Also the battery life on this thing, DJI says you can get 166 minutes shooting at 1080p, 24 frames per second. And I've, I've been shooting 4K, 24P, and I've been getting about maybe an hour, hour and a half-ish around there, a little over an hour. I have not really just run this into the ground because this thing does have a quick charge feature and it charges fast. It can charge from zero to 80% in just 16 minutes and can charge from zero to 100% in 32 minutes. So some of the cool things about this camera too is its tracking feature, which does a really good job. And here, I'll actually, Let's try it out right here. I'll put it on the tripod right in front of me. Oh, and you will need to be able to put on the tripod uh, some kind of mount. I have the little extension mount here. And the tracking works absolutely amazing on this thing. It works a lot better than the OG Osmo Pocket. I did not ever own the Osmo Pocket 3. I've had the Osmo Pocket original and it has come a long way. So pretty neat. Uh, that, that works very well and especially if you're trying to film yourself and you want to set the camera up and walk back you don't have to keep going back to the camera to reframe it's going to do that for you so the creator bundle is 150 dollars more and if you can spend it i'd i'd recommend going ahead and getting it i did not because i didn't think i was going to use the microphone or anything that came with it i didn't need the wide angle the promise filter and i don't even think the creator bundle came with nd filters that would be the only thing i would probably consider picking it up for but the microphone is really cool if you're planning on using this as one of your main cameras because the microphone does record in 32-bit float but i didn't buy it because i do own the dji wireless microphone ones i think they're calling them now because the new one's called like the dji wireless mic twos anyways i got the original set and those will work in the osmo pocket here so I didn't think it was necessary for me to spend the extra 150 because the main reason I bought the Osmo Pocket 3 is to be able to record high quality BTS footage for this YouTube channel or just marketing material for my company because it is important to capture that stuff and get that stuff out there on social media and just post a lot of stuff behind the scenes. This thing has actually done a lot better than what I've thought where I've actually started shooting a lot of my YouTube content on this camera here because it's just a lot easier to set up in my room and just kind of leave on my desk. So shooting 4K 10-bit on this thing is one of my favorite, 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 favorite features on this because I love color grading and being able to push 
the colors of a camera this size is pretty neat. Now, the 4K 120, you cannot film in D-Log and 10-bit. It has to be 8-bit in the normal colors of the, the pocket. So here's some footage here of what that looks like. The, the 120 does look okay. Um, I had heard also using these kind of pocket cameras or action cameras as a whole, shooting directly into the sun is normally a way to make them break and not look as good. And I can kind of agree with that too, because normally you do want a backlight. Actually, for the rest of this video, I'm gonna switch over to this camera so you can kind of see it and hear what it sounds like using the original DJI wireless microphones. So using the Osmo Pocket app, I can check my framing here and get a better look at what is here. And also one of the things here I am trying to figure out with the Osmo Pocket, and I'll do an experimental video after this, so subscribe if you wanna see it on uh, exposure. I don't know where the best way to expose skin tones are on this, but um, yeah, so this is really cool too. And I also use the app to kind of move the frame around here. Uh, I love how smooth it is. Um, looks like I got an update. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I'll go ahead and... So here's the app on the Osmo Pocket here. And it's really neat how you can use the little analog here to kind of move things around. Um, it's just cool to kind of set this thing up, but you can also flip this around to selfie mode and where another reason why something like this is gonna work better than a phone is usually your selfie mode on your phone is gonna be a lower quality than your front camera and then you can't really flip your phone and look at it at the same time. So on the Osmo Pocket, you get that two, two inch OLED screen, which is really nice and you can flip the camera around and be able to see that too. So just for the fun of it, I wanna compare the footage from the original Osmo to the Osmo Pocket 3 so you can see how far this technology has come and the difference that that one inch sensor makes as well too. We're using these in full auto and 4K 24P and the OG Osmo Pocket have the quality all the way up and both are in fully auto when it comes to exposure. Okay, another thing I do wanna talk about is another reason why I didn't get the creator combo is because I wasn't gonna be using setups like this with the lav mic. It is nice to have. I was more interested in the internal audio on the Osmo Pocket, and here's some examples of how that sounds. Okay, I'm gonna take this thing out on a dog walk. Watch, I'm gonna go tell creators we're gonna go on a walk. Or, I won't even say anything. Watch when he sees the leash. <laughs> oh. All right, you wanna go? Let's go on a walk. Hold still. Are you ready? Wait. Oh my gosh. And I think it sounds pretty good and also has microphones on the front sides and behind. And then in the settings, you can control which ones you want on, whether you want all of them on or just one on so that way it's trying to reject things behind it and just in selfie mode or vice versa. If you want to reject behind the camera and have the microphones on in front, you can do that as well too. But yeah, I don't know if I'm actually going to use this kind of setup outside of YouTube. I think if you are a general content creator, this is definitely a camera that you should consider for the price. You can get the camera by itself for 550, I believe. I don't know if I'm going to use this setup outside of YouTube content. I don't know if I'll use it professionally. I might actually use it on some of my retainer clients to create quick social media bites. I could definitely see it being used there, but um, mainly I'm going to be using this internally in our company to create our own content behind the scenes stuff. And also it's already found its way into my YouTube channel and I've already started using this for a lot of my talking head setups in here just because it's so simple to just pop it up, flip it on. I could throw the lob on or just flip on my microphone at my desk and just sync it in post later. But it actually sounds really good if you're close enough to it with the internal microphones as well too. And having the wireless option is also really neat. We're on the Osmo Pocket 3 in selfie mode. We're using the original DJI wireless mic. We're gonna use the face track here. Raylan, what do you think of the Osmo Pocket? Is this a cool camera? Oh yeah. Would you use this one? What do you think of the quality? Quality. Is it good? Could I stare into its eyes? Do you like the, uh, the 10 bit log format? Is that mm -hmm. cool? Yeah. yeah. Hardcore parkour. Hardcore parkour. What's a hardcore parkour? Hardcore obvious. <laughs> hardcore obstacle courses. Okay, you wanna run? Yes. <laughs> it's just a very hard 
content creator camera to not consider in the lineup of what's out there now. A lot of people are comparing this to a lot of the Sony Pocket cameras, and honestly, I think it's outperforming them in a lot of ways. And another thing to consider too is the usability, the ergonomics, the user experience of the camera. This has been really fun to just pull out, flip that screen, and start rolling on some home video stuff for just personal content, personal memories to have something like this. And also, I'm an Android user, hate on me if you want, uh, but the new iPhone did look pretty neat and I almost bought one just for the camera capabilities. But when I seen this, I thought, I'll just grab one of these and this will scratch that itch for me for having that pocket camera. I know it's not the same as having it on your phone because your phone is usually on you. Actually, I did on my last shoot, I wanted to take this for some BTS and forgot it. So and I had my phone. So there's also that to consider too. There's a lot of comparisons out there of it versus the new iPhone, and maybe I will be doing one here soon on the channel. If you guys want to see that, uh, I can get access to somebody with the new iPhone to compare these. If you would like to see that, just let me know in the comments. So that's all I really have to say about the Osmo Pocket. It is overall an amazing content creator camera, especially if you're wanting to experiment with color grading and having that 10-bit D-log. So that's all I have to say about the Osmo Pocket 3. It having the built-in gimbal makes it already slightly more superior than any phone that you're gonna have in your pocket. So that's something to consider as well too. And the one inch sensor, 10 bit D-log, being able to color grade and push an image like this in something so small and convenient with that two inch OLED screen, it's really hard to beat and it's a one of a kind piece of equipment. It's weird to call it a piece of equipment because it has professional features, but it's fun to use and it makes it kind of feel like a toy. But the image you get out of it doesn't feel like it's a toy camera. I also have some more Osmo Pocket content coming up, so subscribe if you want to see that. If they're already out, I will link them in the description or have them pop up on the cards or at the end of this video. But I have a Pocket podcast video coming out and also I'm going to see if this camera can also replace your A cam for some high quality interview setups. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.